Chris. That was good information. All right, we're getting ready to round it up. Uh, a couple of little things. Please fill out your evals that are attached to all of the call sheets. Let us know how we're doing, what you liked, what you didn't like. And uh, your information sheets that uh, Chris gave you, please fill those out, get them back. Uh, we'll try to get them posted on the website and stuff as well. So um, at this time, I would like to welcome up Mr. Al Graham, and he will talk about his little video here that's going to end up in it. Thank you. Yeah, I have a fun clip coming up, but I need to introduce it a little bit. And I was so grateful when the air conditioning came on, and then it just went off. I have seen more naked boobies in the past four days than I have seen in many years. I let me explain. Well, it was Perry's. Perry's Hotel de Sade had some more, and I'm just like, wow, well, these keep coming. We had a bit of Vegas in Tucson last Friday night. I was doing a shoot, part of the documentary I'm doing. It was called the uh, Burlesque and Magic Show. And I had a young crew of graduates with film program at the U of A, and they were shocked. Heck, I was getting to the level where I was shocked. Anyway, uh, logging the, the, the footage this weekend was a lot of fun. And <laughs> anyway, it was a good show. It was the first annual one. They're probably going to be doing more of it. I'm working on a documentary about magicians, and I was hoping that there was going to be a bunch of magicians here tonight, but unfortunately they also have a meeting at the same time that we do. And the crew didn't show up. One of my crew members is here, who's also my daughter, by the way, but she helps out now and again. But I'm doing a documentary on the local magician scene, which is pretty active. For oh, five or six years I've been attending a show at the Temple of Music and Art in August, uh, The Stars of Magic. Last year, I was sitting there watching it, just one stupendous magical act after another. Couples, families, there was a little kid about five years old in a tuxedo, and he was doing magic tricks. And I'm sitting there thinking, 24th show, 24th, I bet you there's going to be a 25th. And I've been wanting to do a documentary, and it's just like, wow, this could be fun. So anyway, I contacted some of them, and they were sort of interested in the idea, and they presented at several meetings, and... Anyway, I'm in the middle of the production on the documentary now, and this is a bit of footage for that. <coughs> anyway, I found out that magicians are really fun people. They're entertainers. They're entertaining. They're in person. If they were in the room right now, I'd have to stop them because they've been showing everybody their tricks. They just cannot stop. And anyway, it's really fun. That one guy I'm interviewing was coming Sunday, uh, Magic Kenny. I was after, you said after the last meeting that I was, you know, you know, I, I was looking for interviewees and he volunteered. He said, Do you have a business card? Well, he pulls out a deck of cards and he's doing this stuff and he says, pick a card. And he picked a card. And it was his business card, which was written on the back of the card. And he, these guys never stop. What's going on in this video is a trick that was done after the meeting. They have a performance section after the meeting, like we have a networking section where they do tricks for each other. And you've got to remember, what you're going to see is these magicians, these are magicians, you know, no outsiders are doing tricks for each other, trying to improve their skills, showing what they can do. So it's just one of the clips that I've made. Now, as far as this particular clip goes, I generated it for the Loft's first Friday shorts in May. I have a lot of footage already by then, and I'm sitting Thursday night before Friday night. Thursday night before Friday night. I said, oh, I'd like to do something for the first Friday shorts. Well, I recorded myself giving an intro, which I'm basically doing now, and then, then I realized that if I did that for three minutes, then I would be gone before they ever got to the trick. So the, the, the introduction is on here, but it's very brief, and if you look, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's okay, you've now heard it. But anyway, the important thing is this is after the meeting, and this guy's doing a trick for other magicians, and I'd like you to see, watch closely, we can rewind it. I was very close. You have absolutely no idea how he does it, neither do I, although they're starting to show me how to do tricks. And that's one of the caveats of what I'm doing. I can show the magic, I can show bloopers and things, but I can't show how they do any tricks, which is fine by me. Anyway, if anybody wants to get involved with this documentary, it's a lot of fun. There may be more burlesque in that show. Yeah, what about the boobies? Excuse me? What about the boobies? The boobies? That, that was the burlesque show. I mean, oh. it was very, very raw. I had no idea it was going to be that raw. It was, this was Tucson. It was a Vegas show in Tucson. So anyway, oh, 
Owen's person documentary, I'm trying to have it done, production show, the show, the next show, the 25th show, the Stars of Magic, is in August 25th at the Temple of Music and Art. Uh, so production should finish shortly after that, a few interviews, and I hope to have the complete documentary done by January. We'll see if it happens. Anyway, roll the clip. Hi, good evening. My name Okay, guys, real quick, I almost jumped the gun and I here forgot about our second nugget. So give us just a few more minutes and we'll be able to hear about radio etiquette on set. Fred, can you come on up, please? Hello, everybody. It's Everybody's a tired months ago. You got the headset, did you go? Yeah. Let's put that on. Uh, how many people here have ever used a radio on set? I see one, two, three, four, five, four, six, six, seven, 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 eight, eight, eight nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then. Who hasn't heard this? You go on the set and you get assigned a radio. Sometimes you get these lovely looking little headsets that go with it, okay? Um, I, I think those in the back, you can hear me without the microphone, okay. So then you get this and you put it on. And now, the first thing that most everybody does is sing on. Hello, is this on? Yes. Yeah, my mic, my test, test, test. Are you up? Give it, give it some, some on. Oh, you turned a button. See, now, the, what I'm doing is exactly what happens on the set. Somebody who doesn't know how to operate the radio is given a radio. First thing you do is ask questions if you don't know. How do you turn it on? On and off. Volume. Where are these at? Do I plug this in? Some of the Motorola radios don't respond. The microphone doesn't kick in. It'll be an open mic when you plug the headset in if your power's on. And then as you're talking, gee, blah, 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 did you see so-and-such last night, so-and-such, blah, blah, blah. And you say embarrassing things <laughs> on the headset <laughs> that was broadcast across the whole department. Okay? Now, the mic is on. Hello, is this mic on? Mic. <laughs> Hello, testing, testing. Now, that's the worst thing to do. Don't ever, ever do that. What you do is, you've turned it on. Can I have a microphone check, please? Mic check. Yeah, go ahead, Brent. I read you five by five. Thank you very much. So, you wait for the response, then continue. Always, now, when you want to start initiating a conversation, sometimes you can use, get away with using trucker lingo, sometimes the international radio code language, which is the ten numbers. Predominantly breaker, if you need to enter, you can say breaker, breaker, to enter a conversation that's already existing. Most all the time, do not use useless chatter. On a set, either the assistant director is going to be making all the phone, all the headset calls. All right? He's going to call it on the set. All you PAs out there are going to listen. You're not going to respond to him unless he specifically asks you for a response. All right, all quiet all around. Quiet, quiet on the set. Brian, Brian, do you copy? Can I copy? I hear you loud clear. Brian, I hear trucks out over by the honey wagon. Can you quiet them down? Isn't that your area? Yes, sir. I'll be having it done in, in 10 seconds. Thank you very much. <laughs> quiet. Camera has speed, sound, sound has speed, and action. Nobody talks and interferes. Now, if you flip over the grip or the electric department and there's some lighting changes that have to go on right in the middle of the shot, you might hear this. Fred, Fred, do you hear me? Then all I will do on the microphone is click it. The code is two for yes, one for no. You'll hear the microphone click on and off. I need you to go over to that baby. I need you to slowly drop down a double. Put that in there, okay? Click, click. Thank you. All right. That kind of stuff goes on. Fred, are you over there next to? Next to Chris? Click, click. All right. Did you get a chance to look at that gun and see what he's got inside there? Are those little blanks? What's going on? Yeah, he's got full loads in there, sir. Okay, so the kind of conversation is only speak when you're spoken to. Don't try to interfere with 
small talk, okay? It's a, an important communication link. The director's going to start giving out orders. The person you do not want to interfere and talk over is going to be the director. If you're using useless chatter trying to find out what you're going to do after the shoot tonight, you may not be there tomorrow. Okay? And it, it's, it's pretty simple. 10-4. 4, four I, I understand. Copy is another one. Simple lingo, lingo there, all right? 10, 10, 5 by 5 means I've heard you loud and clear, okay? It's, it's not real difficult. The biggest etiquette thing I could ever teach anybody, and it's the simplest thing in this conversation that will pretty much end this, is don't use useless chatter. Set your mic appropriately. Try to avoid feedback. Do not abuse the radios. And through the years, I've seen guys that were above me in rank throw their radios in anger, destroy them. I've watched them dis disintegrate in a thousand pieces, right, on the set. Nowadays, it's down, send that guy home. That just cost me 400 bucks. How much am I paying him a day? See ya. Okay, so don't abuse them. Um, try to remember where your radio is. When you go to the honey wagon, or to the bathroom, or to craft service, or do catering for lunch, please remember your radio. Most radios will give you a signal, a signal response that will tell you. It will go beep, beep, beep. When you key the microphone, that's time to get a new battery. Alright? Um, I could go on for a while, but that's about as simple as I'm going to get right there. The most, the biggest thing you can remember is Useless. All right. Um, one thing, though, he was talking about that thing that happened on Posse. I was asked, Fred, will you go and hold down, help hold down the camera crank? Tony Whitman was the key grip. I said, can I go back over another hundred yards back and hold something else? <laughs> because. I was doing something behind that building when they were filling it up with fuel. And I'm like going, McAllen's is that. And when I started hearing these ridiculous numbers, I went, I'm going to New Mexico to hold something. And when that thing went off, I was standing holding a stand with a light on it. And it singed my hair, and I'm over 300 feet away. The poor crane guys, one of them, I won't go into the names guys, Tim Beinler's one of them. These guys are holding the crane, trying to hold it up, the camera's on there, the operator, the focus puller, he's over here, he's looking like this, pulling focus, and the next thing I see from the focus puller is this. <laughs> and I see the BP go, <coughs> he wasn't even looking through the lens anymore, folks. Fred, if you remember... First thing I did was move them 200 feet back. I, and I didn't even see they this. Were 200 this is the truth. Closer. This is the God truth. And they were like, okay, we're ready to shoot the explosion. <laughs> no, please come over here. <laughs> and when it went off, it was the scariest, weirdest thing because you watch those guys go and, and cringe and smoke's coming off of them, like just from a heat wave. And I went, could this be, and like you see those pictures of the nuclear explosion? <laughs> you see that wave? Yeah, right. That mean the one that you don't see, but the, the dust is coming up? That's literally, you saw a wave of heat going. It's like, oh man, I don't feel, I feel sorry for my guys. And then as soon as we, they yell cut, we go, everybody went running to the camera guys. This guy, we see a figure go, whoop, into the back of the fire. We didn't, I, what? What? And then the Forest Service guys are over there trying to recover and put a fire out. On the radio it was, Attention on the set, attention on the set. Keep everybody back. Keep everybody back. Only let the special effects guys in there. Call in the fire department. Where's the Forest Service? <laughs> Useless chatter at that point would have been a bad thing. <laughs> See, I rolled this into radio etiquette. So, um, so he's, he's correct about the proper effect, effects of stunt people and their effect. Also, radios are important things 
for the stunt guys. So I'm going to call you an assistant director okay. or the director. You're going to be in direct contact with him. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want is for somebody else to interfere when we have a key important stunt to take effect. There's also situations, folks, where radios, you have to shut them off. When the director or the stunt coordinator says, shut all radios off. Don't come on the set with an open mic. He may be planting radio-controlled explosive devices, primers especially. I was on one set where they did that. Fast, not fast, it was a fast food, the CUDA thing. We had one on the Posse, too, out there at the canyon. Yeah. You stand in front of the flash, remember that? There, you just don't. We shut our mics off. The first thing I see is a young PA over there, keying his microphone, trying to tell us to turn our walkie-talkies <laughs> off while the special effects coordinator is laying a fake napalm scene. <laughs> so it's important. So thank you very much. Just a couple things I want to add to that. Um, one, on open mics, 